What's up, guys? Jay Daniel here with my co-host, Victor, and this is the Sales at Home podcast. Today, let's talk about money. All right. What's up, man? How you been? I've been good, dude. Just uh, just working away. Um, We were having a, a very, you know, the beginning of a, a good discussion off camera about yeah. like, you know, uh, investing and just stuff outside of sales. And I think um, most people don't think about it, but like, um, you know, the, the, the whole like financial advice, pay yourself first, right? Like, yeah, you pay your investments first, you pay the, the, the money that's going to start working for you, you start to employ your money, it, it, it gives you the ability to get out of sales eventually, you know, yeah, to get sure. out of any business. Um, how, how, I guess, how important do you think that is? in in your opinion, I think it's very important. I think it should be what you're, what you're paying the most attention to. Cause I mean, Think about it. Like, like we've talked about before, but I don't want to be doing this in 10 years. You know what I mean, I don't want to be hustling for money in 10 years. I want to be letting my money make money for me. I want to be living off of assets and things that I do with assets and buying more assets and, and just kind of investing and reinvesting in myself. 100%. Like li- literally, um, with, if you're in sales and this is may- maybe maybe i'm just biased maybe i just you know maybe this is just my experience but do you ever feel like in sales not every month is the same you may have a really good month or two really good months and one month may not be as good like you do want to and obviously you want to have something steady before you focus on diversifying but you you don't want to just be paid by one company where you piss them off or you screw something up and now you they, they cut your wall dry you know yeah um you want to be looking for ways to get like get paid every day, you know, 31 deposits a month, unless it's February. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple streams of income is super important. And, but even more important than that is, is kind of what we're talking about, but what are you doing with your money? Like, are you trying to set yourself up for the future or are you like, Oh, I'm going to splurge and spend it on whatever I want. Bro, like, there's a balance. I'm the worst splurger, like literally <laughs> I have the worst like splurging financial habits. So now my splurge. So now before I splurge, I'll just take a, a piece off the top and like that goes into like some kind of investment, like asset class where it's not that easy for me to pull out and it's working for me mm-hmm. before I get to like, like splurge and use it all. Um, that That's, that's been what's working for me. Like not even saving, just literally investing it. And then um having you know, having accounts set up where I either get dividends or it can start to compound by itself. But um just take that shit out because I don't know, bro. You look at you look in your bank and you just got paid and you got a nice lump sum in there, you know, and you're this is just me because I'm not the most disciplined. You know, it's like, oh dude, I could really go for a hundred dollar steak right now. <laughs> oh man. They have a spec. They have they have meatball marinara subs right now, at um at Wawa, <laughs> you know, and that's that's great and all, but yeah. that's an easy to way to that's an easy way to stay stuck, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I like Grant Cardone's philosophy. It, it, he, you know, he's always talking about like focus, like one or two percent of your energy on like what's going out, but like really focus on like like how much is coming in and how do you keep increasing that. You know, so it's like increasing the income from like the active income and then increasing it from like, you know, passive vehicles. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, because that that's that that is I feel like that's the, the, the way out per se, unless you build a big ass business and then you sell it or you're doing 100 grand a month or whatever. That's positive. Most most yeah. companies, 100 grand a month, the owners taking home like two grand. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> I talked to, I, I didn't talk to, I, I like listening to different people talk about money. And yeah. One of the people that surprisingly is, is really good with money and, and it's really fun to listen to is Shaq. Really? And what Shaq says is he says, put that shit in Wendy's. <laughs> he said, take 50% and put that away. That's, you know, taxes. That's a little bit of savings. That's, that's what that is. Right. And then, half that 50 live off of 25 and invest the other 25 
and as you start to to realize how much taxes you have to pay and all of that, you reinvest the excess of that and put that into reinvestments. And if you think of it like that, you're like, man, so if I put away, put away half the money I make, say I make 10 grand, I live off of 2,500, invest 2,500, 5,000 of that I, I put away. So if I make 10 grand in two weeks, okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm still living decent. I may not be living lavish, but I can survive, right? And until you can increase that money coming in, because once you increase it and keep that same philosophy, like put 50 away, and then I take 25% of, of everything that I made. Like until you can increase making money and, and that starts to make more sense financially, you just keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. And then all of a sudden, like your investments are paying you back now. So then you say, okay, what I'm getting back from my investments, I put more away. And live off of less because I don't need as much. You know what I mean? It's it's such a brilliant philosophy. Oh, dude, no, it's it's fire. And um, it's like because you know the people start like just starting, right? Working at McDonald's, they may see the ten. Like if you're not doing at least ten, like fucking, you probably want to get your cash flow up. If you can't live off twenty five percent of your income, you know what I mean? Like you probably need to make more. Doesn't matter whether it's business, whether it's sales, whether it's anything. Like you probably want to get to ten. Cause I just, I, I feel like, especially with inflation and the way things are going, like you, if you're going to be in the U S or any kind of decent city, like you probably want to be doing that much. Um, yeah. But yeah, bro, I like that. The whole 50, 25%, 25%. Yeah. Up. Cause I mean, like how much do you really need to live? Like if you really break it down, how much do you really need? Very little bro. There's a really good financial book for idiots. Like, like, Jim Rohn recommended it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's like the the simplest, easiest to read. It's it's like a tiny little thing. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. You ever heard of it? Yes, I have. Bro, yeah. tell me that is not the easiest book to read ever. It really is. Man. Take your 10 gold coins. Give one to you. Like, it's just so simple. Yeah. It's a story. There's like 50 pages in the whole book. And it teaches you everything you need to know about finances. Um, who who wrote that book? I forget. It, it's, it has a long ass name. I have it somewhere in in here. But um, yeah, it's it's very similar to um, the greatest salesman. Um, is it? I haven't read that one. Yeah, that that's oh the greatest salesman ever. I think the book's called. It's it's very much a story laid out. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty dope. I love that book. Is this about like Mandino or some shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OG Mandino. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't read it, but I know the author because people the talk OG, about yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. crazy, bro. Um you know, but yeah, I think like, you know, um a lot of these books. Oh dude, I kinda want I know this is a slight pivot, but um I saw one of our past guests, Zach, put up a post about it. Um, and I was I was kind of thinking about like, you know, courses um you know everybody's like buy my course blah 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 mm -hmm. and um i remember at one point in time i was watching i think it was uh who was it? i think it was actually tony robbins he he was um it's one of his programs but you know how on youtube all his old programs are there for free yeah like i was i was watching him and listening to him and i was like this is good this is good and then this is like a couple years ago years and years in the future i'm reading uh, how to win friends and influence people I'm like oh shit it's the same thing i'm reading this other book i'm like oh shit it's the same thing i'm reading this other book it's like oh shit it's the same thing and and, and i'm seeing those same patterns of what the books taught right in, in a lot of the courses and the marketing and the gurus and the stuff you pay like 10 20 grand for so like I, I it's interesting because like as salespeople, right? Our whole thing is urgency, do it now, blah, 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 right? But if you think about like the crypto space or any kind of investing space, what do they say? Do your due diligence, don't make emotional decisions. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's so, because, you know, having, especially being in this industry for like the last three years, seeing the people that get results and the people that don't, I feel like the ones that never bothered to like, read a book or, or kind of look into it or try and, and they're just like okay cool i'm paying 10 grand i'm getting a result 
I feel like those are the people that never get the result. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What are your thoughts on like paying 10K for like the magic pill to do 10K versus like going the free route, reading books, studying? Um, what's just your, I guess, your philosophy on that? So I think there's room for both. And I say that because why does somebody pay for something, right? They pay for something because they don't have the time, energy, or wherewithal or knowledge to do find it on their own, right? So if you're going to put the time and effort in it, because it does take time to read a book. It takes effort. It takes energy to get through and learn something that you're, you're absorbing without being taught right? It takes time and effort, energy. It gives you knowledge. So all of these things are things that you can do by yourself. Can I read books and figure out how to be the greatest salesman in the world? Of course I can, right? I could do that. I could sit down. I could read books. I could I could do it on my own. I could build it out and say, okay, let me map everything out. Let me grab my whiteboard and say, this is where I'm going to be based on this method. I'm going to take a little bit of this method and make it here. Like it could be done, right? But why do people pay for something? They pay for something because they don't want to spend the time, effort, or energy into getting it on their own. The problem comes when there are people who don't want to spend time, effort, and energy, will spend money, but still won't put that same time, effort, and energy into learning that program. Either Mm -hmm. way, if you're going to be successful, you've got to invest your time, your effort, your energy in order to get the knowledge and the skill to do the job, right? So you can either pay for somebody to guide you through it, somebody who's done it before to give you a step-by-step process, or you can grind it out yourself and read the books and and study and learn it on your own and probably appreciate it more from doing it on your own than having somebody guide you through it. Both are great pathways to success, depending on how much work you put into it. But the problem is a lot of these people pay into these programs and they get lazy thinking, oh, somebody's here to hold my hand. That means they're going to pull me through it as well. They're going to guide me through it. They're going to make sure that I'm successful and I'm just going to, you know, kind of waltz through this whole thing and expect a result without putting in the work. You know what that reminds me of, bro? Like, because everybody's, you know, we're not not a coach or mentor or somebody to guide you. You ever played basketball, like on a basketball team or some kind of sport? Like when you're like, tell me not if you're in practice, right? You have a coach. Mm-hmm. holding you accountable and giving you the step by step but uh, bro i just remember doing fucking like suicides and doing a push-up every time you hit the fucking line and being on like push-up number 120 and wanting to die yeah like it's hard regardless yeah man <clears throat> i think i i think i just see the the books and everything as like the the people who've kind of like prove themselves in trying it to a degree yeah you know what i mean like they've gone through the trials and they, they've shown that they're committed because i i just see a lot of people who they see the marketing they see the marketing they don't know it's something they want to do they really like the outcome i want the outcome i want the outcome they pay and then for whatever reason they just don't stick you know where if they just tried it on their own for a little bit they would have just not gotten results not liked it just fallen off whatever disappeared right yeah it's it's this thing that i was i was pondering on but you said it we're we're based off of urgency in sales yeah. right but mm-hmm. if you really think about it we want urgency on our calls we want urgency with decision making but mm-hmm. we don't want urgency with figuring out what you want to do right. knowing that you this is what you want to do knowing that this is something that you that you're you're destined for when we're on our calls, we're asking this, the, our prospects to, to make decisions right there, here and there. But if they haven't been thinking about this process or, or buying into something like this before, when they don't have the knowledge of what you're doing, it's really hard to get someone to make a decision. So we almost prefer someone to be struggling with a decision for a long time and then make the decision right then and there to get help, right? That's, a, that's where we're bread and butter is. We want them to do really? their due diligence on their own and then come to us for the for the decision to to get help. So why do we then not do our own due diligence and then seek help when we've hit a wall? You know what I mean? Why do we just kind of, and that's the problem. People come into the industry and they're like, oh, I want to make 10K a month. And then where can I find how to make 10K a month? 
they find sales and they're like, all right, I'm jumping into a program. Let me pay 10 K a month. It's going to make me 10 K a month. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, it's, it's decision-making. That's all it is. It's, it's a flaw in their decision-making because they're not seeing the big picture, which is no, we want the best salespeople come into sales, having sought it out, not having happened across it. You know what I mean? And yes, there are those people who can happen across sales and do well, but those people who seek it out, who are like, I really want to, you know, use this as a vehicle. Let me look, let me sniff around a little bit and see what's out there and then come into a program. Those people have better results in my opinion. That is such a good way to put it. It's true. It's true. It's the guy who, uh, who, who <clears throat> who's tried everything on their own. They know they've maxed out what they can do. Yeah. And then they're like, Hey, like I'm, I'm stuck help me out yeah. um because now now you just appreciate advice because you've tried shit um huh it's it's true bro um and I, I feel like that applies to anything too right yeah like even even if somebody's in like a men, like a coaching program or whatever like most coaches that i know they prefer the guy to have hell if i'm fucking coaching somebody you know it's like they prefer the person tried a couple things like so they can tell you hey i tried this this and this and i'm getting this result what yeah. could it be different? Okay, do this. Bam, problem solved, right? Yeah. Um, you know why that is? Because it proves one thing that's very important to success. They're taking action. You know what I mean? They're taking action. And there's, even if it's the wrong action, they're willing to put their foot out there and do the work. And those are the type of people you're like, wow, okay, that person's going to be successful no matter what they're doing. So let me guide them into success in this. Oh, bro. And, and and also to add to that, because I agree, like the ability to think critically. Yeah. And, and because I think just having like the mentor think for you, like and not thinking, I don't think that's good either, because that's almost like mm -hmm. them giving you a fish. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's like developing your own thought process to be able to problem solve um, and, and almost 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 working to emulate their thought process because the way somebody thinks is usually the reason they are where they are you know yeah. like yeah. it, it, it this decision making right decision making thought process perspective like uh, the the guy the business owner who's already crushed it dude when i was at home I, I was selling uh this offer right for like sales mentor this is years ago right and um there's a guy who came on he was making a quarter million a year just cold calling like just selling B2B, I forget what, like like PLS systems or some shit. But he cold calling, just, you know, whatever. He came onto the team, never took an inbound call in his entire life, right? Dude, dude closed 10 deals his first week, mm -hmm. you know? You get paid like a thousand bucks a deal. Like, um, you, you know? And like, I think there's, there's, how do I say this? uh i don't know experience i guess uh yeah. it's <laughs> like it's like okay if i'm boxing right and i have a fight and i'm shadow boxing let's go and all i do is all i do is shadow box right and mm -hmm. and my speed's there my quickness is there like i'm i'm in the ring and i'm just shadow boxing like am i going to be a decent boxer sure but the guy who's sparring with someone who's getting hit in the face has a full package, right? He knows how to get hit and how to come back. And the people that can put the work in and know how to get hit are a lot better than the people who are just playing at it, right? Because what makes you a good fighter is not just being able to throw your hands. And a lot of people come into sales and they're, they're mouthpieces. They can throw their hands and they can talk and they can talk a good game, but they've never been hit. So as soon as things get hard, as soon as the prospect hangs up in their face, as soon as they have to interview, as soon as anything happens where there's some confrontation happens. How much is it? Just tell me what you're trying to tell me. Exactly. They 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 balk and and they they flail. Why? Because they've never had any of that that pressure. And once you apply pressure, once you put yourself in a situation where pressure comes at you, then you can pivot better. You can understand, okay, let me just roll with this and let me try something different. And that's the type of person who comes in with the knowledge of trying things and seeking things out. And, and we started talking about investments in the beginning, but that's all it is. It's an investment in yourself and in your future. 
And everything you do is an investment in your future. If you think of time as currency, if you think of energy as currency and effort as currency, it's everywhere you spend it, it's an investment. You can either invest in great things or you can invest in bad things. So no matter what you're doing, you're investing some part of yourself, some part of your time, your energy, and your effort. So if you're going to, what, if you want to be successful, where are you investing? That's powerful. Yeah, you get what you focus on, right? Exactly. And um, yeah, I think that the when you have the actual experience, like it's weird because it doesn't happen for everybody. I see people in the same spot for like 20 fucking years, even though they're doing it. But like, I think when you're actually doing it, like that, that this whole element of like thinking like the person, yeah. And you, you know what I mean? Like the whole perspective shift. I think that occurs much faster when you're in it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you can get like, you, you know, the whole like law of attraction, all this thing, like something that they teach in that is that like, um, if you think something, it has a certain amount of strength, right? To manifest. If you say it much more strength, if you act it, right? If you're embodying it much more, right? The, the, frequency or whatever the fuck is, is bigger like it's um your actions speak louder than words i feel yeah. like and i don't know there, there there's um j- just for anybody getting into it you know i think that's that's the biggest thing like just if you're gonna go into the space understand it's hard and you gotta be fucking on it you gotta be on your shit um because everybody wants to make 10 grand 20 grand 50 a million dollars you know um and so and a good mentor is going to force you to do that they're mm-hmm. going to force you to critically think. They're not going to just put cookie cutter versions of themselves. If you're in a mentorship program, and I say that in air quotes, mm-hmm. but if you're in a mentorship program and everyone's doing the same thing and looks exactly the same way and and sells exactly the same way and, and talks and handles prospects and answers questions and asks questions exactly the same way, that's not a mentorship program. That's a cookie cutter coaching program that's trying to push out everybody just like that, Right. But a mentorship, a mentor is going to look at you, a good one is going to look at you and say, okay, what can you bring to the table and how are you most effective? And let's harness what you have and make you great because they're, they're going to invest themselves into you, right? And if you, can, if you can find a good mentorship that's going to do that, then you're going to have quality success, right? You're going to, have qual- you're going to find quality success if you can find someone who's going to do that for you. But if you can't, and then you're just in another coaching program, you're going to end up looking like a lot of the other people, right? You're going to end up looking like everybody else. And when you look like everybody else in sales, you fail. Yep. Yeah. It, there's a certain element of like your energy, who you are, and how you connect with the person, how you show up um, that you're not going to get from the script. And I think that's like, yeah. you know, because if, if they for a second feel like you're not like a human being that they would want to lead them on the call, they're not going to fucking die, you know? So yeah, I, I think a big part of this whole thing is like, like it, it really is, right? Like, what are you becoming? Like, what are you like, you know, aligning yourself with? Yeah. Um, cool, cool. So I think, I think we'll wrap it up with that. I, I think that's like a really strong message and it's, we've talked about it before, but like, that's what'll get you to doing the investments Right. Um, that that's what'll get you like transitioning out of sales and you know on to the next. Yeah, because so. how you do one thing is how you do everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. You got to have the rhyme in there. There you go. There you gotta, the, the, the iteration. It's a bar, <laughs> bro. It's a bar. <laughs> cool guys, thanks for jumping on. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And rate me. us five stars wherever you see your podcast. That's right. Make sure to ring us five stars and and drop a little review, positive review butter me up (laughs) all right guys see you